How much time does it take to change a belief and a behavior? Eight minutes and 46 seconds? It took eight minutes and 46 seconds for a police officer's knee on a human being's neck to casually end his life. This horrific moment that seemed to last forever, because it was caught on video, something different, something extraordinary happened. This moment caused a global movement. Demonstrations rose from a broad coalition of solidarity and support, demanding activism and change. This moment inspired many to listen, to act, and to reflect. Because our country has a systemic and structural racism problem. Race is a part of every part of life in this country. George Floyd moved our beliefs so that we could examine more about ourselves, so that we could think about the inequality and the racism in our society and within ourselves. Beliefs are powerful. Beliefs drive behaviors. Beliefs are also tough to change. But in this moment, in this moment, the world and this movement demanded that we act differently. Social justice is not a trend. Racism is real. We need to ask ourselves, the places that we're working and shopping and perhaps volunteering, are they obliged to look at the systemic structures that occur within a culture so that they prioritize and treat all of us with dignity and respect? As employees, investors, and consumers, how are you addressing your beliefs? What are you doing about the movement? Our country is on edge, particularly in the workplace, where we spend so much of our time. Society is struggling with issues of gender, inequities in income, education, wealth accumulation, and on top of it, a pandemic. Businesses are at a critical crossroads. The choices that they make today will last for decades. So, what do we do? Racism is going to be a part of our society unless we do something. But what do we do? we must begin to look at the structures and the systems that put us in the positions of where we don't move our societies forward, but instead we continue to keep our societies backward. Businesses have donated millions to racial equity and to civil rights organizations. Business leaders, have declared that they will be anti-racist employers. Businesses large and small have put out statements that black lives matter. This is where the hard part starts. Society and environmental changes, the consumers, the investors, don't want more lip service. They want change. They want to see your actions, both inside your companies and outside your walls. This will be tough. This could be painful, but this is the moment that we have arrived in. Our time is now. I am black. I am a woman.
and I have worked in Fortune 500 companies most of my career, where I have been the only black person on the team. Additionally, attending private schools, Catholic schools in the 60s and 70s, besides me, the only other black in the room were the nuns' habits. In high school, I was the only black female all four years. I didn't choose the job that I have today that I love. I was going to be an interior designer. But because of my experience being the only, I wanted to move only to all. Instead, I work with leaders to move their cultures towards one of creating a sense of belonging and fostering inclusivity for all. This is tough, but we can do this. So what did I decide to do? As a cultural change agent, because I have been involved with implementing systems that have actually started to move organizations forward, I decided to develop an action-oriented tool. Because behaviors are hard to change, and as we know, if we do nothing, those behaviors will remain the same. I call this tool the Business Report Inclusion Card, the BRIC. The BRIC is going to help support leaders and businesses moving from rhetoric to action. This will help you to be able to be graded and measured on what you are doing so that people can see exactly what you're doing. Because the one and done diversity workshops and the check the box activities have not been working. Society is demanding more. The brick is divided into what I call five areas of action, the five Ps. Your purpose. Your purpose is what is going to define your actions to move you forward. You will bring in a balanced group from all levels in your organization with diverse perspectives and diverse thoughts so that they can help to build your inclusive environment. Invest in, consciously support people of color and other marginalized groups through your philanthropy. Look at your C-suite with the extensive networks that they have and introduce your acknowledge and incredible marginalized groups within your own organizations to your C-suites networks. It's a win-win. Your people hire and build inclusive cultures within people who have values that are courageous, that want to be interculturally increased in their intelligence, and who are willing to always address their biases, their microaggressions, their racist behaviors, and move towards change. Make sure that you have transparent and equitable pay. Your purchasing, have your business suppliers be graded and held accountable the same way you grade and hold yourself accountable. Make sure that you ask them questions and that you find out about their fair pay practices as well. When you treat your people equitably and you treat them with dignity and with respect, your losses go down and your profit goes up. Let's talk about Gen Z. Gen Z is one of the most populated generations currently at 67 million and growing. They are a third of the world's population and a quarter of the U.S. population. Gen Z, as of this year, 2020, is the most ethnically 
and racially diverse population in our nation's history. Gen Z is changing the workforce and you must learn what they value in order to bring them into your workforce because Gen Z is three times more likely to change jobs to find the culture that aligns with their values. Gen Z sees what you are doing. You want to see their pedigree? Think again. Gen Z wants to see your pedigree. Gen Z is very attuned to what is happening with race and equity within our organizations. Gen Z matters and cares about race and equity in the workplace. What does Gen Z see? They see that Fortune 500 companies have four black CEOs, just 1%. Gen Z sees that Fortune 500 companies have no black senior level executive, such as ExxonMobil, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Apple, or Microsoft. Gen Z sees that Facebook and Google have one black executive over their diversity and inclusion. Gen Z sees that this year, 2020, Amazon added its first black senior executive. What do you see in your workplace? I know what the gap looks like around me. The complexion of the power players in our country looks nothing like our country. As part of the brick, it will help you to assess and to measure what you are doing in your organization. It will help move you from your rhetoric to action. It will help you to bring in the Gen Z talent because it's not just about bringing in great talent, it's about retaining that talent. What will you do as an organization to bring your talent into your company so that you not only survive, but that you thrive? My goal, my dream, is to have the brick not have to exist any longer. Because businesses are creating a community where people can bring their true selves into the workplace, do the best work of their lives, and where they can survive and thrive. It is very critical for us as a nation to be able to address and achieve racial equity. It's not going to happen overnight. This moment that lasted eight minutes and 46 seconds, it's definitely going to take longer than that. It's definitely going to take all of us being a part of moving this forward. It's not about how much time this will take. It's about what will happen if we don't try. Because we all have a role to play. Thank you.